<clears throat> Not a person in the world. Welcome to the Risk Working Group meeting. Uh, we forgot to start recording. I forgot to start recording. So here we go. Um, <laughs> we've been discussing some of the really uh, amazing insights that emerged last week when David and Johan and I were in Sweden at a NASPOCON event. And uh, I think where we are now on the agenda is uh, discussing just kind of a if there are, I think the to-do I see from last week, which I wasn't here till no to do, is to look at other risk metrics and see where folks think metrics need to be developed. And it seems like a brief overview of the GTI and tooling versus application discussions might be helpful. I don't know, Sophia, if you're comfortable, or Renisha, if you're comfortable helping us. Um, I'm trying unpack. to remember what that was about. I feel like in terms I, of- I, I... I certainly can talk about this one. And you weren't even here, so. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, yeah it's, okay, it is not the good tool infrastructure, although that's hilarious. It's the GNU tool chain infrastructure. Uh, that's on my note-taking skills, thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can keep the last word, but GNU tool chain, okay? It's in the next line. Yeah, but, uh, but it, it, it probably is good to make it make it sure. Uh, yeah, I would have never found okay, it. Okay. Yeah, and it, okay. Yeah, and that next line is absolutely wrong. Okay, um, we are okay by tool chain. <laughs> we mean tools like GCC, and I want to make very very clear. It's important to be clear on this point. Okay, the GNU tools are not moving into the LF. So I'm, the tools are. Let's see, are not moving into the LF, okay? Instead, uh, the uh, um, the support um, uh, uh, LF is uh, preparing to uh, support. Uh, I feel like I've been in like four or five telephone games this last two weeks. <laughs> yeah, um, you know. Uh, and hard and hardening it, you know, you know. So basically, let's say you make a change to GCC. Okay, you are you are going to propose a change, but you want to now run a whole bunch of tests on a whole bunch of different platforms. Okay, you want yeah. to make sure that it works properly and so on. Okay, um, but basically, and and they also want to make it so that's much harder for attackers to subvert this stuff. Okay, and so basically, so you say, Stubert, is this is this uh, getting into the runtime executables and messing no, with them, or this is a source code no, problem? No, this is this is think think build and test. Okay, okay, and by the way, the GNU tools folks uh, uh, typically don't. I mean, they don't release executables. Or a uh, problem more accurately to say is that a lot of people are not going to just download from the GNU folks an executable. Okay. Uh, generally, the key thing that they release that most people grab is are the source code. But you want that source code well tested. You want the infrastructure uh, hardened against attackers. Um, yeah. Yes, and I do. So, and, and in particular, a lot of them are more used to a mailing list based infrastructure where you, you, you post patches and stuff. That's what the Linux kernel has been doing since the its inception. Um, and so we already have a you know, we have already got all the infrastructure necessary to support that. So, well, wait a minute, you know, why not just reuse that? And the short answer is, well, you could, but it, there's some people time and we need to pay for that people time. Now, I do want to be clear. Um, there is, they do use an existing system, involves sourceware. Some of the GNU folks are not comfortable with the chain, with changing like this. Um, in general, I, I don't know what you mean when you say sourceware. Oh, okay. It's it's an organization. Uh, so, oh, okay. Is so it a basically, for, like a for profit, the, the main like leads, you pay me kind yeah, of the, a deal. Yeah, it, it's another organization that be, would be will, that uh, some folks would would like to be, uh, move to instead. Um, most of the GNU tool actual leaders um, would like to use this one that has real funding and so on. But you know what? Just now you know that there is this thing. Uh, mm -hmm. this G thing called GTI and uh, yeah, so 
Okay. Yeah, and, and, you know, and we have to be careful here. The tool chain plans to move. Oh man. Yeah, so it's providing, okay, it provides a more robust and secure infrastructure for these projects, okay? We are not taking over, uh, uh, these are not moving from GNU, okay? So basically better servers to host stuff on. Right, what I hear. exactly. It's a, you know, yeah. we, uh, you know, servers to run the tests servers to run builds to run tests that sort of stuff that makes sense yeah I mean, and what about um tooling versus application is there a quick summary there because i think i think some of these questions might lead us toward what we want to work on and i know we talked about maybe two months ago now um working more closely with the OSSF to try to understand how we complement or collaborate with each other. And I think I was supposed to be there at a meeting and I, di I didn't get there. I don't know if you remember that, David. Tooling, I'm still trying to remember what you're, we're talking about here. Are we, are you talking about the meeting last week with the dashboard? No, I was talking more there, like a few months ago, we talked about like, what is risk and what is OSSF? And I actually went to the OSSF meetings for a spell at uh, OSS Summit North America. Um, awesome. Like we use in Augur, we use the scorecard. It's one of the metrics that Augur provides because it's useful and it's there. Um, yeah, but, and, and, by, and by the way, uh, Sonatype did recently analysis and found that scorecard was helpful and some of them in particular were really helpful at predicting where vulnerabilities were likely to be found. What is Sonatype? I should probably know that. Sonatype's but. a uh, supply uh, software component analysis. Or, um, I mean, they, they do various things, but um, they, they, they uh, sell SCA tools and services, and they also produce an annual report on open source software supply chains. Okay. And uh, I'll, I'll, and they, I'll find the link and post to it. Post. Is this similar to the what the census did at one one point in time, or is there still a sense a census? Uh, okay. The census used several SCA suppliers as their data sources for their data analysis. Um, Sonatype was not one of those data sources. There's a whole bunch of SEA companies. But and so the, I, I, the critique, I suppose, they're the, I don't know if it's a critique, but um, the focus is on packages in the application, not necessarily whether or not they're used in the pack, package in the application, right? So that, whoa, 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 that whoa, whoa. Oh. I'm looking I, I, at, okay. Wait, I'm looking at this the, section right here. Okay, I'm, I'm still trying to understand the context. You're, you're saying yeah, words, but, uh, I wasn't here, so ah, <laughs> I don't. Okay. I, don't totally I was with you in Stockholm. Event, so. uh, we were just talking about in our current knowledge of what we can see in dependency analysis tools or dependency, like anytime you say pull all the packages that are used in your system, um, and sort of commenting on where where we see gaps or where we expect there to be gaps, just as a way to see to discuss how do we improve what data we can gather in these in these sorts of things? But it, it, we didn't really have any solutions coming out of it. We were just sort of talking in general about where we would like to see more information. Um, okay. And so here it was on context of what's in use as well as what you might be using with it, which isn't necessarily captured in that dependency chain. Um, and okay, so wait, 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 think, stop, yeah. stop right there, stop right there, because mm -hmm. you're, you're using words, but I mm -hmm. want to understand what you mean by those words, because okay. I can't understand everything else of, that follows if I don't understand. On the application versus the tools that are used, what do you mean by tools? Uh, this was Kate's point, so she might have had something more specific, but I was... Okay, I, I, she's I, probably I talking... All right, all right, I've talked with Kate many times. They're, they're probably talking about the what is run at, used at runtime versus the tools used in, say, uh, build time or test time. Yeah, that's... I that thought that's talking what, about. I thought it had something to do with that just because yeah, Kate said it. But I wasn't here, so about. I don't know. 
Yeah, yeah I thought I, I should have captured that because that does sound but like more accurate. And it, also, we had all these conversations earlier when we were looking at our dependency metrics initially that we were trying to make that distinction explicitly because this, this could be capturing two sets of information. Right. Okay. Uh, uh, around the uh, runtime dependencies of an application versus the tool uh, the tools that are that are used used otherwise uh and eg to build or test it or, or test or distribute it okay um i, I think if, if state restated that way see now if if that's what you mean i totally understand what you mean now i, I think that's fair although there is work going on right now to extend there's nothing that prevents um you know, S-bombs from including that information. That said, I, I think the expectate, I don't think this is, it's wrong to have done it that way. I think it's quite reasonable. Let's start by focusing on the code that's running on your system. Uh, because while it's true that compilers, for example, can insert uh, vulnerabilities unintentionally or unintentionally in stuff they generate, um, to a first order, those are less common than the just I've got a dependency, I'm calling it directly, and it has a vulnerability. So um, it's absolutely true that people are working on this. There's already some support now that I think there will be more later, but I think it's rightly, that's a second order effect once you have gotten your runtime dependency down. Because if you don't have that, why are you bothering with the other stuff? Um, the last point was I shouldn't be under this bullet because it was separate entirely as well. The ah. system safety analysis too. Um, okay. and we were, so maybe we just pull that out. Uh, shift tab. Yeah, oh, we, two we of us did it at the same time. Other, <laughs> ah. Other, <laughs> um, and here was more again like she's thinking about system safety like ISO standards uh, in terms of whether or not the physical hardware and specs are up to par. Um, and whether or not that information is being captured. I think, again, like we were kind of running the gamut yeah. more here in a mm -hmm. way that I think if we do, we could always get broader as the group. And I think if we want to focus ourselves a bit, I, I kind of like the last thing that we were talking about um, in the sense of actually we'll connect you to the first thing that didn't make the recording, but in collaboration with the risk working group in the open SSF that's thinking about this dashboard, this particular group, if we want to focus on metrics that can be best applied in that context, then I think we finally evolved to need a risk metrics model. Because <laughs> I like I don't know if I'm interpreting metrics models appropriately here, but I feel you like that's, that's what we need is a set of metrics that has a well-rounded view of risk as right. we see it and whether or not that's what ends up going to the dashboard is another story, but at least would provide a starting point or a point of discussion. I think David, I love that you raised this point last time. It's much easier to react to something than it is to create something organically with a group of people. So yeah. I could see this group in a position to create something to react to um, in terms of set selecting a number of metrics. And I think we have some to work with already, but I know we're like basically almost at time here. Um, but maybe at our next yeah. meeting, outline. I, I have to leave five, I have to leave a few minutes early. So. Yeah. I would, I would like love to find a model and basically figure out where our gaps are so that we can, I, I feel like given the timing of, of the, the working group in OpenSSF, it would be appropriate to have something to share with them, say in, in a week, a couple of weeks or so. Like I feel like they want to move if, quickly. If, but. If, 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 this, uh, if this group could actually move that quickly to create a starting, a starting set of Here's a proposed set. I mean, if you if you go look, I actually created, and I you should have already gotten a copy of it, but a um, you know a, a, some ideas for the dashboard, some metrics, and so on. Uh, but it was basically a hey, let's come up with a list of plausible metrics. Let's winnow it down quickly. Come up with something and iterate. I I do think it'd be awesome to have something more principled, but I I think that the dashboard thing is going to be one of those things where. Uh, implement best you can, and then if we can, uh, in a shorter term, and then if we can make it um, more principled, focused on broader issues based on feedback, that would be awesome. Well, and I think I think if we start with just a like I can run OSS scorecard against a bunch of stuff, 
And sure. we could just start sure. by looking at, at what that is. And then we can look at some of our Libya me me metrics manifest. Yep. But, but um, I think they, I mean, with scorecard, they already know that's already in. They already know about that. It's best practices, they already know about the VADs. They already know about that. Yeah. Uh, I did mention lib years and also chaos. But, you know, if there's other things and ways we can figure things out, that'd be great. Yeah, I think I think there are. And um, maybe so. that, that should be our, we should be looking at, okay, well, there's always a scorecard plus what? would produce a, a useful risk metrics model. And that's metrics model has really become David, the word that we use for dashboards. So if you imagine that every use case may have its own dashboard, so you end up with infinite dashboards, the metric model is a way of saying, here are some metrics that we would put together and show to you this way, such that you can get an understanding of the question about general level of risk um for the projects in your portfolio by the way what is the status of libya is that now an official chaos metric yeah it's a what? published it's a published metric auger calculates okay. it um we haven't um it's it's uh figuring out how to promote that part of it i guess is uh part of where we're going. We are, we're very close to a hosted version of Augur that will make that a lot easier. Um, and there's also a hosted, um, I think this may have come up in the community meeting, Sophia, the Compass dashboard that's being developed in um, by Giddy that will work on any open source project. Have you heard of this? I have, but I, I couldn't attend the last weekly because I was at all things open. So I don't know what the current state is, but I did know that they were trying to implement most, like as many of our metrics as possible is kind of what it sounded like. Yeah, what they're really doing are they're implementing the metrics models that have been defined so far. Okay. So it's a way different ways of baking the metrics that we have together. And I think, I think looking at that and looking at some of uh, that will be an interesting discussion um, for sure. Um, and I apologize, I, I did put these down as our things to talk about next time, which I think will be pretty exciting and worthwhile. Okay. I do have to take off myself. Um, so our choice is like- I understand. I, I've I'll, got rush, rush project, so thank you. All right, I will call the meeting to a close then and uh, wish you all farewell. See you in thank two you. weeks. Thanks everyone. I'll probably see some of you next week. Awesome. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye.